Hi there, Stephanie here. It's the time of year when folks are completing their universal screening, and I wanna give you some things to think about, some things that maybe other people aren't talking about. There's lots of uses for universal screening data, but I wanna focus you in on the percentage of students who are at risk. I think this is the most important piece of information in all of early literacy. Rather than only looking for the individual students who are at risk, if you would aggregate those results and look at, talk about, think about the percentage of students who are at risk, you will take a big picture view of the instructional environment that every individual student is learning to read within. And you'll be able to be more effective and certainly more efficient if you have that sort of uh, big picture view. So aggregate the data, find out the percentage of students who are on track and the percentage of students who are at risk. If you can only do this within your classroom, fine, that's still a good start. It would be great if you could get together as a grade level team with this information across the grade level, what percentage of students are at risk or on track and have a conversation. What does this mean for our core reading instruction? If we know that only 45% uh, of our second graders can read CVC words based on a screening indicator like nonsense word fluency, that's gonna have huge implications for what we do as a second grade team in our reading instruction. So if you can't have a conversation as a grade level team, go to your principal, take just your class data, the percentage of students who are at risk in your class and strategize with your principal. Have your principal become aware of what this might mean for classroom reading instruction. Bring your teacher's edition. Uh, show the materials that are in your core reading program that are supposed to be used in Tier 1 instruction. And juxtapose that to the data about the proportion of students who are at risk. And see if that seems reasonable. See if that seems like a match or a fit. Uh, then the next thing to do with your screening data is to group students based on the lowest skill that they haven't yet acquired. And what do I mean by the lowest skill? I'm going back to thinking about that concept of a path to reading. This is not uh, something that is uh, you know, an absolute, but in general, students move through a sequence of skills as they're learning to read from phonemic awareness to the alphabetic principle and basic phonics to accurate word reading, accurate text reading, then fluent reading of text, and eventually reading comprehension with a good, steady, healthy dose of language comprehension skills throughout. Screening data is often targeted at indicating those word recognition skills. So find out where students in your class or your grade or your whole school are performing on that path to reading and find the lowest skill that they haven't yet mastered. That's the skill to use for forming small groups. You can use that small group instruction to great benefit during tier one. Customize your core reading program so that you are targeting to exactly what students need during tier one. And some students are getting that extra dose of perhaps the same small group instruction in tier two. So for older students in, in grades, let's say three and above, you're, you might need to do some testing back or what Acadians calls survey. They have a product for doing this, which is a set of alternate forms for looking back and testing back through the grade levels to find that lowest skill where you should target your small group instruction. In some cases, you might have historical data on your students. So if you teach third grade and you have students who are 
uh, not understanding third grade text, look back to see how they scored on screening as second graders. Were they able to read CVC words on a nonsense word fluency assessment? If not, then that's a pretty good sign that you are going to need to do some small group intervention in order for those students to be able to access the third grade uh, scope and sequence. So hopefully this gives you a few things to think about, maybe a different way of thinking about using your universal screening data at the beginning of the year.